The draft is coming up, and the Dallas Cowboys can use some extra talent to get us over the top. You all have paid attention to free agency. The Cowboys barely made any moves. Some will say they were being cheap. Bargain-based shopping, as a few scouts and talent evaluators will point out. But I'm here to tell you that in the draft, there are some players that can fit with this defensive scheme and what Dan Quinn is doing. And there is one athlete from an HBCU school that can do just that. And I'll chime in. What's good, everyone? This is Raw Truth Media, giving you the raw content that you deservedly need. Peace and blessings. Make sure to like and share this video. The draft is approaching, and I'm so excited. The NFL draft is like Christmas for football fans. We look at the mock drafts, and we, we, we predict which player is going to be a stud. It's going to be a game changer. Sometimes we're right. Sometimes we're wrong, unfortunately, but it's a fun event. And anytime I get to talk about my team, the Dallas Cowboys, I'm definitely excited to think about what player can impact their team. Now, they're set with Micah Parsons, but since Micah Parsons is a versatile linebacker that can play middle linebacker, outside edge you name it. You still need to put pieces around him. Leighton Vander Esch, he has a one-year deal. He's not a, what you call, reliable. He's been hit with the injury bug since having that neck injury. Quite frankly, he hasn't been the same. So the Dallas Cowboys can use a linebacker that is versatile as well as dependable and that's James Houston James Houston at Jackson State former transfer from Florida had 16.5 sacks 25 tackle for loss he was disruptive I don't care if it's the FCS I don't care if it's the SWAC he was a menace he had to face double teams almost every game. Not almost, pretty much every game. And when he was at Florida, he was a co-starter. And battle-tested in the SEC. So he's played middle linebacker for Florida in the SEC. And he played edge at Jackson State. Now, I was watching a Coach Prime video. And they were saying... The reason why they put him the edge was because there was so much competition at middle linebacker. The reason I believe they put him on edge, and I know they're not going to say this. This is just my opinion. I could be wrong. But I think they put him on the edge just because they didn't have someone who can rush the passer as good as him. As a linebacker. I'm not talking about defense end. As a linebacker. It's not that he couldn't play middle linebacker. Uh, you saw at the senior bowl that he stood out at middle linebacker just as well as edge. So much so, I had people hitting me up telling me, man, I didn't know James Houston was good at middle linebacker. I knew it. It's just that he, he didn't get to play it at Jackson State. But in the NFL, he's one of those players... He could just line up and get the job done. The NFL teams, you say that you want to draft and support HBCUs. Now's the time. If there's not at least seven players from HBCUs drafted, then something is wrong. Now, don't draft a HBCU player as a token and not going to use them. 
draft them because you believe in their talent. You're giving them a chance. If you'd ask me who would be the first HBCU player to be drafted, it would be Joshua Williams. Again, I'm going off mock drafts, uh, rankings, etc. 6'2 corner from Fayetteville State. And for those who truly know me, I got a couple family members out there in Fayetteville, very familiar with Fayetteville State. And uh, that would be a big deal for them. Now, Fayetteville State is Division II, and um, a, a player of his caliber, he's the real deal. I seen him at the Senior Bowl on TV, and he sticked out. 6'2", 200 pounds, 200 plus pounds, that is. Sticky range, uh, could play man or zone, and he held his own against the best of the best. Now, I'm kind of biased, <laughs> but I would like James Houston to be first. But if he's not, it is what it is. But I truly believe that the Cowboys can get him, especially in the fourth round. I think they can get him at the fourth round. Now, James Houston, he could go higher than that. So... If you're a team that's that's thinking about, oh, I could just wait to get an HBCU player, this is not the year to do it. <laughs> not only James Houston, but Marquise Bell, who is a talented safety. I've seen this so many times in the draft where you see a small school player from an FCS Division II team, and teams keep keep saying, oh, we can, we can wait. And then somebody picks them up. Don't be that team to wait too long. Wait to the sixth round. And they're not even there. It's a it's a dangerous game in the draft. You can't play the waiting game. You can't go like, well, we have a fifth round grade, so we expect them in the fifth round. That always doesn't happen. In the NFL draft, expect the un predictable sometimes you just take a risk that best player available you know that's out the window when someone you like is drafted higher than you expected then you have to change your board but this is what the Dallas Cowboys could have with James Houston on their team Sometimes you could put Michael Parsons on edge. If you do that, you could put James Houston in the middle. If you want Michael Parsons in at the middle linebacker position, you can switch James Houston in the edge and he'll do his thing. You see where I'm going? This is why it'd be a perfect fit for Dan Quinn's defense. He runs a four, not a four, three, but a three, four multiple. So he switches his up, up, from the D-line position to the linebacker position, uh, which creates a position flex. Perfect fit for James Houston. Perfect fit for Dan Quinn. I'm telling you, this is the this is a match made in heaven. And if I'm James Houston Scout, I'm doing all I can to have him speak with the Cowboys frequently. And sell them that this is the type of linebacker that will change the game for an already improved defense. Remember, the Cowboys defense went from 30 to 12. That's a big improvement. If they can just keep adding to this talented defensive team, then the sky's the limit. If you watch the playoff game, I didn't really blame the defense. I mean, they held the 49ers to 20 points. The problem with the Cowboys in the playoffs, slow starts. Always constant slow starts, lack of execution until it's time to win the game. And there was a chance for the Cowboys to win the game. They just couldn't pull it off. That's the problem. When you go to the playoffs... You need to come out like gangbusters. 
and be ready for the shit. Excuse my language. You can't allow these teams to, you know, to 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 be overly confident. Like the 49ers defense, when they had a couple stops, their energy picked up. And I noticed and I was like, oh boy, this is gonna be a long game. And I was right. That needs to stop. I don't know if it's Kevin Moore. I don't know if it's mental, uh, mentally with the players, but something has to go right. And this draft is very important for the Cowboys because the clock is kick, ticking. And we can't just keep saying the same song. Oh, maybe next year, maybe next year. No, that may not be next year. We're going to keep saying it again and again and again. This is the time for the Cowboys to finally win something. This is Raw Truth Media, giving you the raw content that you deserve to need. Like and share this video. I'm out.